Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord our God, before thine altar, Father. Thou knowest best our yearning hearts, this supplication answer. Lift up from what thy people, Lord, bless us, O God. We stand prepared to serve thee with devotion, be it with sweat of blood or tears, or humble resignation, for be thy to church on this special day we will be celebrating the solemnity of the institution of the Polish National Catholic Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. I will go into the altar of God our help is in the name of the Lord my dear brothers and sisters let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack. In green pastures you let me graze. To safe waters you lead me, you restore my strength. You guide me along the right path for the sake of your name. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you call the humble priest, Father Francis Holder, to be your servant and to awaken your people for work in your vineyard. Grant that as we observe the 124th anniversary of your call to Bishop Holder and to us, our faith, faith may be firm and our hearts be enkindled by the fire of sacrificial love. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the solemnity of the institution of the Polish National Catholic Church, we take the first reading from the Book of Wisdom. When they see him, they will be shaken with dreadful fear, and they will be amazed at his unexpected salvation. They will speak to one another in repentance and in anguish of spirit that they groan and say, This is the man whom we once held in derision and made a byword of reproach. We fools. We thought that his life was madness, and that his end was without honor. Why has he been numbered among the sons of God? And why is his lot among the saints? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. I praise you, Lord, for you raised me up and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. Lord, my God. I cried out to you, and you healed me. Lord, you brought me up from Cheryl. You kept me from going down to the pit. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Now the Spirit expressively says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience, seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature, God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, deliver me. Almighty and eternal God, cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus spoke unto his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is who bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel, according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as you can tell from our altars, we are in the season of Lent. But today is very special, for today we are celebrating the 124th anniversary of the institution of the Polish National Catholic Church that Father Francis Hodor instituted and became the first bishop and the first prime bishop of our church. I think it is so appropriate that we use the gospel according to John where Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. There are many branches in Christianity and we've seen branches develop. In the very beginning, we read from Luke's book of Acts that they were all in one accord and they, they shared everything in common. But what happened later on is that the one faith, one Lord in baptism became a little muddied. There were a lot of divisions in the early years and we find that in 324 AD, 300 bishops gathered together in the city of Nicaea to discuss important matters of the identity of Jesus Christ as well as the understanding of the Holy Trinity. They came up with a formal pro profession of faith which we know as the Nicene Creed. Later on, we see another branch of a division that took place between the Western Rite, or the Roman Catholic Church, 
and the Eastern Rite, or the Orthodox Church. And because of differences in some of the theological issues, in 1054 AD, there was what is known as the Great Schism. We continue that in the 16th century, a priest named Martin Luther, in 1517, with his disputes against Rome, put 95 theses on the doors of the Wittenberg Cathedral in Germany, and he established the Lutheran Church, which began the Protestant movement. Others followed after Luther, John Wesley and John Knox and Eurig Zwingli and John Huss. We see another branch, and that branch was the institution of the Polish National Catholic Church by Father Francis Hodder. Father Francis Hodder was born in a small village, Żarki, Poland. He was one of seven children that came from a poor family. Now there were a lot of oppression that took place because that section of Poland was controlled by the Austro-Hungarian Empire in that there was persecution against the Polish people. Francis Hodder in 1893 came to America seeking religious freedom. But again on the shores of North America, he found opposition, he found persecution, which led to the forming and the organizing of the Polish National Catholic Church. I am the vine and you are the branches. It seems that when we see Christ as the vine, we receive the life from Christ. He said that I've come to give unto you life and to make it more abundant. And so, in 1897, there were many Polish immigrants who sought religious freedom. And Bishop Hodder, in 1907, that he continued to build the Kingdom of God through the Polish National Catholic Church. In 2019, our parish, Holy Name of Jesus, celebrated its 90th anniversary. It is interesting that in 1929, the first Mass was not held here, but rather at the Red Men's Club on the corner of North Main and Elm. And the interesting thing is that those who had gathered all sought religious freedom. As most of us know, that in November of 1929, there was the stock market crash, which decimated our economy. But the interesting thing is that in less than nine months from the first mass that was held, this church was built by Polish immigrants. At the apex, at the top of our sanctuary, we have a special inscription. It says, Follow Bo na Wysokości, which in English is glory to God in the highest. Bishop Hodder was a very spiritual man. He was led by the Spirit 
just as many of the great religious formers, reformers were led. And that he passed on a heritage. We have the distinction in the Polish National Catholic Church that the Word of God is a sacrament, just as baptism and the Holy Eucharist. Bishop Hodder believed that being led by the Spirit and preaching the Word of God not only edified the individuals of the parishes that became a part of the Polish National Catholic Church, but also it sanctified the churches. My dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this anniversary of the institution of the Polish National Catholic Church, the vision is the same as it was 124 years ago, to make Christ as the vine, and to be able to receive the life from that vine, to be able to grow and to mature. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let the memory of those who came and built this church, who gave of everything they had to be able to seek God and to be led by the Holy Spirit. It is to their honor and to their memory that we celebrate in this church this most special day. I am the vine, you are the branches. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And so my Dear brothers and sisters, may that message ring out clearly as we celebrate today. To always look to Christ as the life-giving force by which our, tro our church grows and is blessed by Almighty God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mighty your arm, strong your hand, your right hand is ever exalted. Justice and judgment are the foundation of your throne. Love and loyalty march before you. Happy the people who know you, Lord, who walk in the radiance of your face. Living in my true God. 
God for my countless sins, offenses, and omissions for all here present, for all faithful Christians living and dead, that this sacrifice may avail me and them unto salvation and life everlasting. Amen. O God, who did subdue men with great dignity and worthiness, and through Jesus Christ did wonderfully the noble, uplift, and sanctify, grant we beseech thee that through this mingling of wine and water we may become worthy partakers of this holy oblation in which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind and in the deepest truth unites himself with them. Through the same Christ our Lord we pray this day. Amen. my brothers and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God on this most special day. Lord, accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for that of the Holy Church. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we place these gifts before you, grant us faith, integrity, and patience as we labor to build your holy church, we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We praise you and celebrate your calling forth of the Polish National Catholic Church, through which you call us to carry the light of Christ to all people. Through word and sacrament, we encounter Christ and receive your grace to bring the church to its fullest stature. As the true teacher of human society, destined to reach perfection in heaven, Therefore, on this solemnity, we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, 
that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, on this day. Let us keep in prayer the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all victims of the coronavirus, and pray for the support of their families. Let us remember in prayer all those who serve to save others, the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, the therapists, and all caregivers and health workers. In our prayers today, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as for all animals who are abused and neglected. Also for those who suffer violence, both here and abroad. Let us offer prayer to Almighty God for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, that God would watch over all of them and bring them safe and sound back to their families. And finally, let us offer our prayers for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same, Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. Let us remember in our prayers our first prime bishop, Francis Holder all deceased bishops and priests, as well as for all the early organizers that formed parishes in the Polish National Catholic Church, and all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To their souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, Grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who did say to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant it peace and unity according to your holy will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. 
By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused from my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul into life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, what we have received on your lips, may we receive mentally. And may this never be because of us an everlasting gift. I have received in your blood which I have drunk. Cling to my innermost being and grant that no sin remain in me. And the moon is holy sacrament and lose and read with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our merciful Father, grant that as we benefit from the grace received in this holy sacrament, we may follow your holy will as we continue to build your holy church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let, let us bless the Lord. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, again I welcome you as we celebrate the Holy Mass of the Eucharist on this most special day. It is my thoughts and prayers that Almighty God might bless all of us and our loved ones with His divine presence, that we may come to know the love that God has for us as revealed through His Son Jesus Christ. May we always remember that He is the vine, and we are the branches, that with Him we can do all things, and without Him we can do nothing. And so we will conclude with the offering of a prayer for our first bishop, the prime bishop of the Polish National Catholic Church, Bishop Francis Hodder, as we also offer prayers for all deceased bishops and clergy and early organizers. It is also a part of our prayer today that we pray for all the parishes and its congregations and its pastors and administrators that Almighty God might work among all of us and that it is through His Holy Spirit that we might be guided through work and through struggle to learn the truth which is the symbol of the Polish National Catholic Church. <clears throat> Following our concluding prayer, I will offer the hymn of the Polish National Catholic Church that Bishop Hother wrote. And so again, my brothers and sisters, may God bless all of us as we give glory to God in the highest. May God be with all.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the soul of our first bishop, Francis Jacobin. <coughs> all departed bishops and priests and the early organizers eternal rest grant unto their souls O Lord may, light shine upon them. may they all rest in peace amen. in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen, amen. Sunward at the chain. 